afternoon, everybody. Um, to the first of the two tarot sessions, tarot session A. And we are kicking uh, this tarot session off with uh, Woody Banerjee, who will talk about Lawrence Jim Kant and his Asian group, Adama Property and State Independence. Well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, let me begin by uh, thanking the organizers for bringing us together at Broadwood for this very nice meeting. Um, and for the invitation and the opportunity to give this talk, uh, which is uh, joint ongoing work with Max Niedermeyer, uh, going back uh, over several papers and several years with some more to appear. So as the title may suggest, I'm going to talk about formulating the functional renormalization group, or FRG, on Laurentian manifolds. Now the FRG, uh, of course, uh, is a leading non-perturbative tool for the study of quantum gravity as used in the asymptotic safety program. Um, but the formalism uh, relies heavily on Euclidean signature. And as was uh, discussed uh, by Bianca, we need to think of, we need to wean ourselves off Euclidean signature and think seriously about Laurentian aspects. Um, but I indeed, the adaptation to the physically relevant L Laurentian manifolds is uh, technically and conceptually challenging. Nonetheless, uh, in the uh, past few years, there has been some urgency on this matter and um, several um, uh, research groups in addition to us have pursued uh, Laurentian signature flow equations. So let me highlight uh, the works by uh, Litte Mittal on the graviton uh, and uh, the works by uh, D'Angelo and collaborators which take a more algebraic perspective on the flow equation. So the upshot is when you try to formulate the flow equations for quantum field theories in Laurentian signature backgrounds and quantum gravity via background fields, you encounter a number of qualitatively new features. And what I will focus on today is uh, the dependence of the flow on an underlying vacuum-like state. Now, this is a short talk, so I must necessarily omit details, and I want to present the essentials of these ideas, so I will choose to do this using the simplest case of scalar QFTs, but of course, the idea is generalized to other fields, and in particular, quantum gravity through the background field formalism as is used in the functional renormalization group. And it's a short talk, so let me tell you what the results are. <laughs> if this vacuum-like state is chosen appropriately, in a sense, I'll make it clear as soon, uh, the UV flow um, is expected to be by and large the same as that in Euclidean signature, which is obtained via the usual heat kernel technology. On the other hand, the flow in the infrared of the uh, RG scale depends on the uh, choice of state. And this is highly non-local, and it's not even accessible through the uh, non-local heat kernel. And I will present an explicit example of that. So uh, let me start things off. I will be working on uh, globally hyperbolic manifolds, and this is what the Vetric equation, uh, the FRG flow equation looes like in Laurentian signature, you have the I over here, and I include the H bar. And um, it's gotten in the usual way by introducing a modulator kernel into the bare action, and so on. Now, at the simplest level, uh, one can see the issue of uh, state choice or dependence um, through simply the local potential approximation, where for the uh, effective average action, you make uh, the ansatz that looks like the bare action plus some scale K, RG scale K dependent potential. And when you stick that in, you see that in Laurentian signature, this flow, the right-hand side, is driven by the inverse of this modified Hessian. Now, for a moment, let me omit that modulator and just consider simply the inverse of the Hessian itself, which is, which is essentially a wave-type operator. So um, here is the explicit expression using ADM variables, but the important point is there is a minus sign here. And unlike the Euclidean case, where this is an elliptic operator, here it's a hyperbolic operator. And as such, this inverse is highly non-unique, but you need the inverse to uh, formulate the FRG. So these operators are well studied. Um, for example, from perturbative QFT and curved backgrounds, if you want a well-defined quantum theory, um, the inverse should have the so-called Hadamard form, which essentially dictates that, that its local singularity structure should mimic that of flat space. So there are there is a pole-like singularity, a logarithmic singularity with these coefficients u and v, and a smooth part, w. And the point is, the um, bits in blue, the coefficients of the singular terms, are completely determined by the operator and the background geometry. 
you have no choice in them. Uh, you do an expansion in powers of the singe function, and you get coefficients which are related to the heat kernel coefficients. Um, on the other hand, the bi-scalar W is smooth and it's state dependent. Put another way, it's completely unconstrained outside of maximally symmetric or static geometries. So the goal in defining this vacuum-like state for the FRG is to somehow lift the Hadamard property to the modulated Hessian. And that should lead to a state independent ultraviolet flow, but a state dependent infrared flow. But let me go beyond the local potential approximation to talk about the full FRG. One can see the state dependence at that level um, by uh, making contact to perturbation fields. So you take the flow equations and you simply stick in the usual H bar ansatz. And that gives you a recursive system of flow equations as shown over here. And the important thing is solving the first, or first order flow, the first flow equation determining GK zero iteratively drives this flow. You determine GK zero, that determines gamma K one and so on and so forth. And GK zero is the inverse of this modulated uh, Hessian and the Hessian is once again a wavetime operator plus a potential. So indeed, the same considerations of this Hadamard-like property apply. So in summary, the appearance of state dependence in the functional renormalization group is clearly visible at, for the full FRG at the level of a perturbative iteration and also the level of the non-perturbative local potential uh, approximation. The uh, thing that enters is the inverse of this mod modified uh, Hessian, which here curly D is a wave type operator, and that's necessarily non-unique on generic globally hyperbolic manifolds. So one wants to make a lift of the Hadamard property in a technically feasible manner, and that's what I'd like to talk about now. But before I do that, um, there is a technical issue I must address, namely what does coarse graining and Laurentian signature mean in the context of the FRG? So in Euclidean signature, um, a use, an important ingredient of the FRG is, a, is this mode modulator kernel, which modulates typically according to the uh, eigenvalues of the uh, elliptic Laplace operator, and that suppresses the UV modes in the flow equation, and that's responsible for the uh, finiteness of the um, uh, FRG flow equation, which is very nice. Trying to do that on uh, Laurentian signature, of course, doesn't work because you have a null momentum, and so that just doesn't come out very nicely. If uh, one takes the perspective that, well, the finiteness is something you really want to preserve in Laurentian signature, one way of doing this would be to say, okay, on a foliated background, um, the full um, uh, Laplacian is, of course, non-definite, but one can modulate modes according to the spatial part of the Laplacian, and that will indeed render the right-hand side of the flow equation manifestly finite. Um, one can, of course, um, may want to instead preserve manifest covariance, but in that case, the right-hand side is not finite, and you need additional counterterms, um, as pursued by Litter Mittal and D'Angelo and collaborators. So, some examples. Um, let me begin just by talking about Friedman, Robertson, Walker backgrounds, and I'll talk about more general backgrounds towards the end. So um, just take a simple Friedman Robertson Walker and think of the flow of the dimensionless effective potential, where um, it's driven by this uh, curly G functional, which is essentially the uh, equal time coincidence limit of the uh, spatially Fourier transform Green's function. And the reason that's a useful object to think about is that it satisfies a so-called gelfand dicke equation, which is this complicated looking thing over here. But it's through that that you can enable a lift of the Hadamard property. The reason is a theorem we proved uh, that on Friedman, Rob Robertson, Walker backgrounds, and more recently on Bianchi, one backgrounds, the Hadamard property of the free Green's function is entirely characterized by the generalized resolvent expansion of the uh, gelfand dicke equation. And its coefficients are determined by a closed algebraic relation, i.e. they're completely unique. So if one is interested in the FRG for the UV flow, one can make a, a large K expansion, which, is, which follows from the generalized resolvent expansion. And one has the following structure for the curly G uh, functional. So let me point out these uh, coefficients, G n bar, are completely determined by an algebraic relation, a closed algebraic relation, so they're completely unique. 
And the UV uh, behavior of the flow is determined by these coefficients. And of course, being unique, it's independent of the state. And there is a co uh, correspondence between these G bar coefficients, the spatially off-diagonal Hadamard coefficients, and the spatially off-diagonal heat kernel coefficients. So up to some uh, technicalities, um, the flow of the effective potential for large K, i.e. in the ultraviolet, is by and large the same as one would obtain uh, with the Euclidean formalism and the heat kernel. And I, I can't talk about details, so I'll refer you to the papers below. But now, turning to the infrared, that is not at all the case. Um, so why would you care about the infrared? Well, um, in the FRG formalism, the full effective action is obtained by taking the K to zero limit. And that's how you make contact to observers. And in the Euclidean formalism, the small K form of the flow equation is accessible essentially in two cases, maximally symmetric backgrounds or via a non-local heat kernel. Now, in the Lorentzian setting, um, firstly, I need to show you that there exist green functions with the lifted Hadamard property. I postulated the property, I haven't shown they exist. Um, now, given that, assuming they exist, one would expect the, on a conceptual of the state dependent parts of this green function to impact the deep infrared or small k field. And on a technical level, how does one extract the field dependence to small k? We studied this, um, to stu study this, you need an exact Hadamard like state. And uh, we did this for the spatial FRG with so called states of low energy, which um, are a construction of Hadamard states for the free greens function. And the essential idea, forgetting all technicalities, is that you minimize a temporally averaged energy function. So you have some temporal averaging function which has some support, uh, compact support in time, and you just minimize that. And um, recently that was, we generalized that to Bianchi 1. But that uh, generalizes very naturally to the uh, FRG effective potential flow equation, and it gives a lifted Hadamard curly G at all scales. So indeed, there exists a solution with the, with the lifted Hadamard property. And one reason for looking at this is one can systematically access a small RGK flow, uh, RG scale flow analytically, because uh, this guy, uh, curly G SLE, admits a convergent infrared expansion in K. And it looks something like this. Um, you get this guy over here, and let me break down the formula. Uh, first, let me point out it's valid for all FRW spacetimes, and as it should, it specializes correctly to Minkowski. Good. Um, it has a well-defined infrared fixed point equation. You can see this bit over here is uh, an autonomous uh, equation, uh, which would you would not get if you did the uh, a bunch Davis-like uh, state. You do get non-autonomous corrections, uh, which arise from the temporal non-locality in the construction. And what for me is really interesting is that it the flow explicitly depends on this uh, function f of t, which you chose to define your state of low energy uh, object. Um, and that you can, cannot possibly recover from the non-local heat kernel. So in, indeed, it's interesting to think about where the crossover regime occurs between the non-local heat kernel flow and the state-dependent aspects. Okay, um, in the last few minutes that I have left, two minutes that I have left, I'd like to talk about more general backgrounds because of course, in the context of quantum gravity, you want to think about general uh, manifolds. And in that case, um, in the Euclidean setting, heat kernel methods are central objects. Um, the heat kernel of the uh, Laplace operator in the uh, Lorentzian setting doesn't exist. It, it's not well defined. But one can approach it instead by a variant of a Wick rotation uh, via complexification of the lapse function in the uh, ADM uh, decomposition of the metric for globally hyperbolic manifolds. And the point is that the coordinates and transition functions stay real. And if you do that, you get a complexified Laplacian and the QFT Hessian is also complexified. And our theorem, which we uh, recently proved and should appear soon, is that on any globally hyperbolic manifold, this complexified Hessian for any theta away strictly away from zero and pi generates a semi-group which has a smooth kernel, which we call the Wick rotated heat kernel. And that rigorously defined heat kernel has a small S expansion which pretty much looks exactly like the one you get in Euclidean signature with some simple substitutions. And what that tells you is that in the FRG, uh, the Green's function can be realized in terms of this kernel via Laplace transform, and the UV aspects can then be accessed via a small s expansion of this kernel, and those um, via the relation to the um, um, 
heat, um, the heat kernel coefficients, um, you get state independent uh, UV flow. And you get that via rigorous interpolation between the Lorentzian and Euclidean signatures. Now, one may be tempted that, okay, you can get this just by a formal expansion like the pseudo heat kernel. Uh, that doesn't quite work because if one is interested in the infrared aspects, uh, you, really, you need to take the uh, coordinated heat kernel time to infinity and theta to zero plus either Lorentzian limit. And to, un to understand that limit, you need to know the behavior and estimates on the kernel beyond simply a formal expansion. Okay, conclusions. The upshot, the Lorentzian signature FRG is inherently state dependent. Uh, only the UV aspects remain independent of the details of the state. And the technical control of the state dependence has only been really, s we've studied it in perturbation theory and the LPA. To really do this, you need to know the uh, green function at all energy scales, and this was done um, for spatially homogeneous backgrounds via the states of low energy construction on um, friedman robertson walker backgrounds. And uh, we propose a route to generic backgrounds via this lapse uh, wick rotated heat kernel, and that's to be further investigated. Let me thank you with a picture from Okinawan Sunset. quantum gravity, just because you know, in the UV, if your geometry is really looking less and less flat, mm -hmm. how, um, so in, it strikes me that the fact that your UV is not affected is related to sort of the choice of your fundamental degrees of freedom or whatever what have you. So. Right, uh, so um, within the context of the functional renormalization group, when you study quantum gravity, of course, in the continuum you study via background field formalism. And within, within the technical confines of the background field formalism, uh, the, you have a smooth background metric and the Hadamard property is a natural thing to require. Going beyond, uh, for more rough geometries, of course, it needs further generalization and thinking about how you go from there. Okay, I think we have to move on. Let's thank Uri again. Please stand by. Okay, great. Uh, we continue with Nobu Yoshiota. Uh, speaking about wave function normalization and flow of coupling's in asymptotic and state dependent gravity, next 15 minutes or less. Yeah. Hmm? Oh, the okay. So I repeat, uh, thank you very much for the introduction and uh, giving me the uh, organizer to, for giving me the opportunity to talk about my recent work with uh, Hikaru Kawai, which is already published here in this, uh, uh, in this uh, archive number and digital review three. Now, uh, what I'd like to talk about today is the importance of the wave function renormalization in consideration of the function renormalization group equation to gravity and if you just to, uh, uh, try to find a beta function for each of uh, very uh, important couplings, then 
what you you are getting is uh, may not maybe a fake uh, fixed point that uh, shouldn't be uh, considered separately, but uh, you should consider some invariant combination of the uh, invariant under the wave function renormalization. Now, uh, let me first start uh, with uh, some brief introduction to the what is approach to the asymptotic safety. We would like to understand how to reformulate the quantum gravity, and we want to consider formulation that can deal with uh, such phenomena within the three framework of lo local field theory. Naturally, you may think that uh, this is uh, given by the uh, superstring, but the superstring at the moment needs a more uh, non perturbative approach that can tell you about the uh, curved space time phenomena, which uh, at the moment uh, cannot. The string theory cannot describe because you understand this theory only at the level of, uh, of uh, a perturbation theory or through some indirect approach using a holography and so on. Now, the, in the context of uh, local quantum field theory, the Einstein theory is non denormalizable and higher derivative terms always appear once you consider the quantum theory of this kind of theory. And uh, you have to take into account this higher derivative couplings that uh, how to make sense of this uh, things, uh, such terms. In four dimensional gravity, on the other hand, it is known that quadratic higher derivative theory is renormalizable perturbatively. The problem with this uh, uh, result is uh, uh, it is non unitary. But uh, it is natural to consider this kind of quadratic theory and uh, consider a uh, uh, theory with such a higher derivative terms. And uh, if you think about uh, this theory, uh, non perturbatively, uh, then there may be uh, some root group way out of this non unitarity problem. So the theory that uh, we I am going to discuss is uh, given by the some uh, cosmological constant term, which is not the usual one, but uh, this is a vacuum energy and also a Newton coupling, which is defined by the quotient this way, and then uh, some uh, dimensionless couplings given by through this combination. But uh, this is a uh, order density, which doesn't give uh, any uh, physical uh, quantum effect so that uh, I can just ignore this term. Now, uh, <coughs> to fully understand the theory, we need uh, some non perturbative treatment of this system, and that is uh, uh, the part part <coughs> that is a part where this uh, renormalization group uh, approach may make sense. And uh, this is usually termed as a uh, asymptotic safety. Now, uh, I briefly try to explain what is the asymptotic safety approach. Uh, we consider effective average axiom obtained by integrate over uh, uh, integrating out all the perturbation of the field with the momentum larger than k, which is uh, given by this form. And then uh, this this is a cutoff function. Then uh, <coughs> this uh, the role of this cutoff is to remove the infrared mode from the action so that the path integral is carried over only over uh, UV mode. And then we make a horizontal transformation to obtain what is uh, uh, analog of the effective action. As you can see, that when the k goes to zero, cutoff goes to zero. This cutoff is removed, and this uh, reduces to the usual definition of the of the uh, effective action. But uh, and so this is inherently already divergent. But uh, the quantity we are looking uh, at is uh, is uh, derivative. How this uh, uh, effective average? Uh, action is uh, changing according to when you uh, change uh, this uh, moment of cutoff. And uh, the equation, exact equation that this equation satisfies is, is given by this. And because of this uh, existence of the cutoff derivative of the cutoff function, there is no e divergence in the definition of this equation so that you can s simply uh, m move around uh, ch by changing the uh, k. And when k goes to in infinity, as a starting from uh, some initial condition, you, if you can define the, this gamma k at k equal infinity, then that, and if that is theory is, uh, is well defined, then this defines the theory itself. And this is the approach that uh, uh, I'm going to follow. And so, uh, 
how this functional renormalization group equation give, gives uh, effect well-defined theory is uh, to uh, expand this uh, uh, effective average action on the basis of the uh, sub-operators, which in principle consists of an infinite number of operators in, your, in our theory space. But uh, we look at uh, the flow, how it uh, changes uh, the coefficient of this, and then that is described by this beta function, which is given by the derivative of uh, the cu each coupling of the operators, and uh, uh, with respect to the t, which is given by the logarithm of k. And we set the initial conditions at, at some point, and then flow to k infinity, which describes the uh, uh, theory as an infinity. And if the flow uh, stops at uh, uh, some fixed point where beta equals zero, then the, this coupling is no longer uh, changing. So that uh, this uh, this means that uh, the coupling is well defined in the uh, UV limit, and so the theory is uh, well defined there. If all coupling goes to finite fixed point at UV, uh, physical quantities are well defined because uh, uh, this uh, effective average action is well defined, and then. Uh, if there are only finite number of the couplings, then uh, uh, you have only finite number of operators that uh, you need. Then uh, the theory in the UV theory is well defined, and you have a finite number of this operator, which means that you can make, once the coefficient is determined, then you have uh, uh, ability to make a prediction. And uh, then we integrate uh, the equation go down to k equals zero, and then the get the standard effective, ac effective action, which descri describes the physics with uh, all the uh, quantum effects included. Now, uh, <coughs> important constants of the functional renormalization group is that the gravitational couplings depend on the energy scale k. And then uh, the those operators are whose coupling goes to fi a fixed point is uh, relevant operate, called the relevant operators, the others are called irrelevant, which should be removed from uh, the definition of a theory so that uh, our theory will be well defined. Now, uh, there are lots of works in this direction. There is indication that uh, this uh, asymptotic safety program works, but uh, there is a one important problem a uh, important point that ha has not in most of the has not been incorporated uh, in most of the uh, results. That is the consideration of the wave function renormalization factor. As you know, in all quantum field theory, we suffer, uh, get uh, some uh, modification due to the quantum effects that wave fun you have to introduce a wave function renormalization, which by using that you have to uh, denormalize the theory such that you get uh, finite uh, numbers. Now, uh <coughs> now, how this uh, happens in this, uh, 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 in this theory is the support for simplicity considers the Einstein theory with the cosmological constant. When we consider the, we, uh, the quantum effects, naturally the, you are a metric uh, gets uh, some renormalization factor z. Then uh, you define a new uh, denormalized, denormalized g, mean g prime, which, and uh, under this uh, denormalization, uh, under this renormalization, uh, square root g gets this factor, and uh, this uh, Einstein term gets this factor, which means that uh, uh, the cosmological constant is uh, uh, stuff. Uh, this getting this additional uh, uh, dependence on the d. Now you can see that there is only unique combination of these operators, uh, which is given by lambda g square. And you can see that uh, this is the only quantity which is invariant under the scale. So uh, even though you get uh, some fixed point for lambda, that is uh, that the value of the cosmological constant can be changed by using a different uh, uh, f renormalization factor so that uh, that uh, fixed point itself on the cosmological constant itself doesn't make sense because you can choose uh, your 
you normalization such that you, you can uh, make it to, to the value as you like. And the only combination uh, that doesn't change is the only physical quantity that you can make uh, uh, any physics. So uh, then uh, what uh, this effect has? At each step of renormalization, this affects the renormalization equation so that uh, the effect is because here is the z square comes into as an infinitesimal form, it affects like this, and then uh, Newton constant, it affects uh, like this, uh, plus two factor and minus one factor. And uh, you can easily see that uh, uh, here is the lambda tilde is defined by a using a cutoff function lambda tilde is a dimensionless uh, uh, cosmological constant and uh, uh, this is also a dimensional Newton constant. And then uh, the equation itself is, uh, is uh, looks like uh, invariant and uh, 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 the consequence of this equation uh, appears to be invariant. And then uh, user, if you use the usual optimized cutoff to derive what is a function of this, which can be calculated from the right hand side of the functional normalization group equation. If you use this, then because uh, this uh, Laplacian operator depends on the uh, metric itself, this gets uh, some factors dependent on z. And then because this cutoff is not expected to change, you have to, uh, this breaks the invariance of, uh, of the uh, equation. So uh, we propose to use a different cutoff which uh, makes uh, this term and this term uh, scale the same. Then what you we find is the coefficient is given by this where you can see that most of the terms uh, comes into the function of the g square lambda. Then uh, uh, we solve the uh, lambda tilde dot e equals something and g, t g tilde dot is something. And then uh, you can choose this uh, wave function renormalization factor such that uh, this lambda tilde is constant, then it that determines uh, uh, this z uh, theta, and then substitute back into this, then you can get a fun uh, beta function for g. It turned out this uh, equation can be written solely in terms of invariant uh, combination of g square lambda. And then uh, this eta uh, obeys uh, this uh, uh, equation, then uh, this once you write uh, the uh, beta function like this, then you can easily see that this is a typical, typical asymptotic safe uh, uh, coupling. Because if you start from the somewhere here, then you have a positive beta and this uh, grows to uh, when you move to the larger energy and then the, the coupling flows to this fixed, U, this is the UV fixed point. And then if you go down, then this is a IR fixed point. So this is a, 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 this is a very nice uh, property that you find that then uh, you find the behavior of the uh, eta is like this in the high energy, it is going to a fixed point and then in the low energy, it is going to zero uh, very uh, slowly, even though it's slowly, it is uh, uh, fixed uh, going to zero and which is the expected behavior and then we can also do the same analysis with higher curvature terms. It turned out uh, that uh, it we could found, uh, uh, find uh, only the asymptotic free uh, fixed point. And uh, when the co uh, coupling is small, uh, the coefficient of beta function of the coefficient is given by this. And in order to study how these uh, behave when small cup uh, coupling is small, then you can take a ratio of this and uh, then how this lambda and psi are going to both zero uh, in at infinity. Now, uh, by some analysis, you can write uh, some uh, space of the ratio of the coupling and uh, there is uh, uh, some, uh, there is uh, some region uh, divided by these two equation and when uh, psi is uh, first of all, when lambda is put, uh, in order to go to lambda equals zero limit, uh, you have to start with a positive lambda so that uh, 
uh, lambda has to be positive, and then if you start uh, from above the line cycle alpha lambda, then the, the flow goes like this, uh, and the uh, flow is tending to this cycle alpha lambda line. Then uh, if you start from this region, the flow also goes like this. But below this uh, uh, line, uh, which is given by psi beta lambda, then you can easily check the flow doesn't converge to uh, psi equal zero. But there is a huge region where uh, both coupling goes to zero, but bo and uh, with the ratio fixed uh, uh, going down to zero. And then uh, we, we could say that both terms are relevant if, if we start from this region. So this is basically what uh, I like to tell you that uh, the, uh, this redundant uh, wave function renormalization factor should be taken into account in all the approach using uh, asymptotic safety. If you just look at the behavior of each term, then that doesn't make uh, it. All of them doesn't make sense. The only combination that is invariant on the, this renormalization, uh, wave function renormalization, is uh, a quantity that you have to look at. Then uh, using this approach, we can find uh, really physically important renormalization uh, uh, group equation, which is the invariant function of uh, all the co invariant function, invariant combination of the uh, coefficients and find the uh, uh, expected behavior. So thank you very much. That is uh, all what I wanted to tell you. Yeah, thank you very much, Nobu. Uh, is there any quick question? Yes. Yeah, thanks, Nobu. Just very quickly, can you comment on the relation to essential RG to essential oh. renormalization? Well, yeah, uh, there is uh, some approach using that, and uh, the, but in this approach, they are using uh, more gen more general. Uh, a, a the definition of the metric, which hmm, which depends on the on the uh, curvature and so on, but uh, this is in a, in a, in my opinion changing the theory itself. Uh, in that approach, they are truncating uh, the theory at the second order. But once they include such a field dependent. Uh, operator, then a uh, change of a variable, then it uh, introduces a huge uh, series of the operators that you, you, in order to be equivalent to the original theory, you have to keep all the terms that are generated. But, but um, in most of the essential uh, uh, renormalization group approach, they are ignoring only keeping the second to the quadratic order, and that makes the theory different, so that uh, discussing uh, uh, Fixed point is uh, that theory. It uh, seems to me that uh, you are just uh, uh, changing the theory around and uh, cannot uh, say definite uh, result to a uh, fixed, finite, uh, uh, infrared, same infrared theory. Okay, thanks. I will not make this long. Can you hear me? Okay, the next speaker is at Loka, actually, Maximilian yeah, Becker, and he will talk about composite operators and mass embodies of quantum gravity. The stage is yours. Okay, so thanks first of all to the organizers for giving me the opportunity or this challenge to report to you in a couple of minutes on this ongoing work in collaboration with Alexander Kuvov and Frank Dauer-Effig on composite operators in asymptotically safe gravity. So, uh, wait. Ah, yeah, okay. So, uh, luckily in the previous talk, we had already a really nice introduction uh, about the asymptotic safety approach towards quantum gravity. So maybe just to repeat that uh, very quickly, for our common goal of finding a predictive quantum field theory of gravity, the asymptotic safety hypothesis is that there 
the high energy completion of gravity is provided by a non-interacting fixed point of the RG flow, the renormalization group flow. So we have a non-Gaussian fixed point in the theory space, space which you can think of as the space of all couplings of the theory. And there is a UV critical surface on which the relevant directions lie, so all directions of the flow that are attracted by the fixed point. And the hope is that these are finitely many. So um, these finitely many parameters are also the three parameters of the theory. So this, so why should we study composite operators in the asymptotic safety approach? So the asymptotic safety scenario implies that there are non-trivial uh, quantum corrections to the scaling dimensions of operators. And the scaling uh, dimensions are, of course, uh, connected to the universality class. So now, given that we can identify such an ultraviolet fixed point, there are two questions. Firstly, how many relevant parameters are there? And how can we construct meaningful observables? And both these questions can be probed, firstly, via the Wetterich equation. This is the equation that we've seen in the previous talk. That is a functional renormalization group equation. And also via uh, a composite operator functional relevant group equation derived from that. Um, so <coughs> in this talk, I will focus on the first question, how many relevant parameters are there? But to give you also a glimpse of what role composite operators play for the construction of observables, I wanted to show you this small scaling argument here. So if you look at a correlator of such a form, then sometimes it's easier to access the scaling properties of such correlators than the, the, the observables themselves. So if we rescale this uh, radius r here by a factor lambda, then you can, in a quick calculation, uh, convince yourself that these uh, correlator scales like this. And here are the scaling dimensions of operators appearing here, these two operators, O1, O2, the volume, and also of the geodesic distance. So somehow we need to compute these UV scaling properties. And uh, the functional renormalization group offers two avenues to do that, as I said. Firstly, the Wetterich equation. And otherwise, we can also do this via composite operators. This is a little bit an analogy to point that out of computing scaling dimensions from the KPZ equations, where these scaling dimensions are explicitly calculated. So let me walk you through asymptotic safety in a nutshell again. <coughs> so this is the Wetterich equation as we, as we have seen it before. Gamma k is the effective average action, a k-dependent version of the ordinary effective action where k is a momentum cutoff. And typically, we solve this equation with the truncation ansatz of this form. So we expand gamma k in curvature momentums mi. And these are parameterized by couplings ui. With the bar, I usually indicate dimensionful couplings. And without a bar, the corresponding dimensionless couplings. And if you plug this in, then the RG equations take the, this form of ordinary differential equations, where on the right-hand side, we have the beta functions. Then you can find a fixed point as the zeros of these beta functions. And if you look at the solution for the linearized theory, then you can expand it around the fixed point and in first order, 